Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And it's been a while since I individually have been on camera talking to y'all about my favorite team, your mom's favorite team, and everybody's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. But today I decided it was time to make a return to this type of video and this type of content to talk to you guys about the Jags. Now the Jags have had a busy offseason so far as far as the coaching staff goes and making bad decisions go. Whether you want to talk about moving two games to London, hiring Jay Gruden as the new offensive coordinator, or hiring Ben McAdoo as the new uh, quarterbacks coach, there are still a lot of things that need to be done this offseason. Some on the personnel side, some still on the coaching staff side, and we're going to dive into that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the five things the Jaguars need to do to have a successful offseason. Number five, trade Nick Foles. Now, I don't know how possible this is, but it's something that if it's on the table, the job wires absolutely need to do is trade Nick Foles. Nick Foles, as far as a cap situation, is only going to hurt the Jaguars. The Jaguars are already in terrible in a terrible cap situation, and they don't have a lot of money to spend this offseason, and there are some holes that need to be filled in order for this Jaguar team to be successful in 2020. And some of that has to do with getting rid of Nick Foles and getting rid of some of that money. Like I always say, I'm not too well versed in the whole financial world of the NFL, but one thing I do know is having Nick Foles on this team is only going to hurt this team more than it's going to benefit it. Because the Jags are going to come into this season in a typical Jaguar fashion and say, oh, we have Nick Foles. So what are we going to do? We're going to keep him. We're going to keep him. Don't even worry about that. We're going to keep him on the roster, and we'll probably throw him in there week one and have a similar situation to what we did in 2019 and wait for him to suck it up. And then, and only then, will Gardner Minshew come in and take over this team when the Jaguars are already 0-2. We don't need any of that. We don't need none of that smoke. We need Gardner Minshew on the field from the jump. We don't need Nick Foles to be tampering with any of that. So if there is a trade partner for Nick Foles to get him out of Duval County, the Jaguars need to do it. I know he just bought a, you know, right when he got, uh, right when he got added to the Jacksonville Jaguars, he bought a brand new freaking house. So obviously, I know that that is kind of shitty, a shitty deal for uh, Mr. Nick Foles, but it doesn't matter. You need to get him out of the door so Gardner Minshew can shine, and there'll be no doubt about who the quarterback will be for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2020. Number four, avoid getting a wide receiver at the number nine overall pick. There are going to be some talented cats there at the ninth overall pick, and we're going to be doing some mock drafts coming up and putting out a lot more mock draft content for you guys to enjoy and for you guys to watch in the coming days. And one thing that you will not see from me is selecting a wide receiver at the ninth overall pick. There are some more bla glaring holes for the Jaguars heading into 2020 than the wide receiver position. I think a lot of the wide receivers that were on this team from a year ago are still going to be able to shine in 2020. DJ Chark being the major guy. D.D. Westbrook, who's a good second, third option. And then Chris Conley as well, if the Jaguars try and go out <clears throat> and retain Chris Conley. It could also be another one of those things where this year the Jags go out and try and sign another guy to a one-year contract and see how he performs. But I think Chris Conley's the guy the Jaguars should keep around. I think those three in general are three really solid pieces for the Jaguars. And now Jerry Judy is going to be there at the ninth overall pick more than likely. The Jaguars should not be tempted to take Jerry Judy with that ninth overall pick as it stands on February 13th, 2020 when I'm recording this. It might change in the future, and, you know, my opinion might completely change. That's how the draft process goes. But Jerry Judy should not be an option at the ninth overall pick. The Jaguars should draft somebody like Isaiah Simmons, who's a versatile player that could play linebacker, safety, nickel corner, everything like that. That's probably the most important position on the defensive side of the ball nowadays. It's a versatile player that can play everything from the linebacker position, safety, 
and nickel corner position. He can play any of those. He's the most versatile player in the draft, and it would be another hit on the Jaguars' defense. We need a guy at that linebacker position to be steady. Obviously, Miles Jackson be coming back, and when he was in there, he didn't perform you know, at the highest level per se, but I'd say linebacker is one of the most crucial needs for the Jaguars heading into 2020. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to agree with that, but I think at number 9, Isaiah Simmons is a must-select if he's on the clock, especially if it comes down to him or Jerry Judy, the Jaguars should still select Isaiah Simmons. Number 3, retain Calais Campbell. Retaining Calais Campbell is a must for the Jaguars in 2020. Me and John discussed that in the last Jaguar Report podcast, talking about how he is already one of the all-time best pass rushers in Jacksonville Jaguar history, and he's only been there for four years. He's fourth all-time in sacks for the team. He's won Walter Payton Man of the Year, getting the Jaguars some clout on national TV during the Super Bowl. That is a huge piece of your team, a huge piece of the defense, and his leadership cannot be denied. Now, there are going to have to be some veteran cuts, and Calais Campbell should not be among those cuts. Guys like Marcel Darius, I can see, but Marcel, again, was a big piece in helping the Jaguars run defense when he was healthy. Now, that's another position I need the Jaguars are going to have to target during free agency. The Jags shouldn't have to make too big of a splash in free agency. They don't have the money regardless to do that. So they need to fill Marcel's hole. A.J. Boye, another guy that is going to leave this team. And a guy that I think, you know, like Isaiah Simmons is going to help being so versatile. And that's why the Jaguars need to draft him at number 9. And that's why they need to go after a guy like Isaiah Simmons. Because guys like A.J. Boye are probably going to get the axe. Even though he's another guy, I think... He's a really good leader on this team, and it's going to leave a glaring hole at that cornerback position because now you got Trey Herndon on the outside and maybe putting DJ Hayden on the outside. But Hayden's more of a nickel corner. He's more of a slot corner. Uh, not too sure how he's going to do as a complete other side, opposite outside corner of uh, Trey Herndon. So that's going to be another position I need, so it's going to be a little hard to rebound from that. But the Jaguars are going to have to keep Calais Campbell because, in my opinion, Calais Campbell is the most important player on the Jaguar defense. And if they got rid of him, that would just be completely, completely silly. Number two, fix the offensive line. Now, a lot of people have a big problem with the offensive line. I personally don't have as big of a problem with the offensive line as a lot of people do. I think Cam Robinson, uh, me and Chance discussed this in our last Troop Talks with podcast. He's a guy that's coming off of an ACL tear injury. It's going to take him a while for him to rebound and really become who he once was at that left tackle position, and he looked really good in year one. So uh, hopefully next year he rebounds and he plays well. Jawan Taylor, another guy who I think has a lot of potential. He played really well in his rookie season. And, of course, Brandon Linder, I think, is a solid piece for this Jaguars offensive line, no matter how you slice it. That leaves the two-guard position. If the Jags are going to spend big money in free agency, which they really don't have the option to do, I think the guard position should be the one that they go out and target. A lot of people want to talk about the tight end position. A lot of people want to talk about the wide receiver position, you know, spending all those money, all that money there. But I think the most important thing is getting a guard that is competent and can play well. And I think that comes with replacing AJ Can instead of Andrew Norwell. I know Andrew Norwell has not played up to expectations, but if you're going to pick one or the other to start next year in 2020, it's got to be Andrew Norwell. And he's got to improve and he's got to play better football. He has a lot of money tied to him, that's for sure. But he still has potential to play well. His first year in Jacksonville, he did play really good football. The last two years, though, he has fallen off, and he hasn't been that great of a player. But hopefully he can step up, be the player we need, and we can get a guy like Brandon Scherf or something like that in free agency because that is what the Jaguars need to target if they're going to target any position in free agency in 2020. And coming in at number one in the things the Jaguars need to do to have a successful offseason in 2020, pay Yannick Ngakwe. It really do be that simple. And that was five things that the Jaguars need to do to have a successful offseason in 2020. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel often. <laughs> Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.